Well, good Tuesday morning to you folks. Hopefully you, uh, you had a good weekend, you had a good Monday, you had a good night's rest last night. Uh, for those of us ready to go back to work today, hopefully you are ready to face the day. I'm going to read to you a piece of scripture in the book of Mark, chapter 2. Chapter 2 of the book of Mark. And again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together, in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four, means carried there by four other men. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, <laughs> Let me get the page turned. Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say, The sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed, and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, he saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth, before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. <laughs> we never saw it on this fashion. This is a story of a new birth. <laughs> this, if it were a, uh, if it were a video clip, a segment of this man's life, this is his new birth taking place thy sins be forgiven thee now uh, we know that uh, Jesus is the only one that can forgive sins and uh, make us fit for heaven uh, we know that Christ had not died yet but I'm not going to argue with him whatever he says goes right but we do know that it's because of his death his resurrection and because he lives and when the Holy Spirit draws us to him, we can have the same experience this man did. I like what happens here because you nor I can see what happens inside of an individual when they are born again. You will see the change on the outside though. Jesus said to this man, your sins be forgiven. These people sitting around said, who is he? He's blaspheming. No one can forgive sins but God. Jesus says, so you will know that I have the power to forgive sins. I will say unto him, arise, take your bed and walk. And he did that. So if he did the arising and taking his bed and walking, that tells me that he also, his sins were forgiven when Jesus spoke those words. Now I will leave you with this. And you and I should both know this is for me just as much as it is for you, anyone that watches this today. It is not my deeds. It is not anybody else praying over me that saves me, forgives me, forgives me of my sins, washes me clean. But it is by the word of Jesus Christ. And should we know that, we should also know that no sin enters into the presence of a holy God. I said Sunday night at our church that God um, is holy, he's righteous. Sometimes we fail to see him as he really is. And, and I don't think even with the description in the word of God that our minds can even comprehend how holy and righteous he is. But I do know this, that there is one mediator between God and man, and that is Jesus Christ. That's not George Fastine. I can't pray and God saves you because me asking him to. 
Um, he forgives sin. Uh, the forgiveness of sin comes through and by uh, the blood of Jesus Christ. No sin is going to enter into heaven, folks. So if you are believing that you are a good person, that you will go to heaven because you've not been too bad, you're just bad enough to go to hell. If you are believing that you have been good enough to go to heaven, you're just good enough to go to hell. The only, the only way, the only door to heaven, the only way to eternal life is through Jesus Christ. Sin can never enter there, this song says. So let's give it a shot today. Heaven is a holy place filled with glory and with grace. Sin can never enter there. All within its gates are pure, from defilement kept secure, sin can never enter there. Sin can never enter there. Sin can never enter there. So if at the judgment bar sinful spots your soul shall mar, you can never enter there. If you hope to dwell at last when your life on earth is past in that home so bright and fair, you must here be cleansed from sin, have the life of Christ within, sin can never enter there, sin can never enter there, sin can never enter there. So if at the judgment bar sinful spots your soul shall mar, you can never enter there. You may love his, you may live in sin below, heaven's grace refuse to know, but you cannot enter there. It will stop you at the door, bar you out forevermore. Sin can never enter there. Sin can never enter there. Sin can never enter there. So if at the judgment bar sinful spots your soul shall mar, you will never enter there. If you cling to sin till death, when you draw your latest breath, you will sink in dark despair. To the regions of the lost, those who prove the awful cost, sin can never enter there. Sin can never enter there. Sin can never enter there. So if at the judge judgment bar sinful spots your soul shall mar, you can never enter there. Lord, I thank you for uh, the day you've given us. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to look into your word today. God, I I pray that you will help us not to deceive ourselves, to believe that you weigh us on a scale of good versus bad. If we were going to be judged, we wouldn't be judged by other men anyhow. We would be judged by your only begotten Son. And if we were held up against him in a scale, we come far short. So God, I'm glad that we are not judged that way. But I'm thankful that it is because Jesus Christ died and shed his blood on Calvary. It is because of that bloodshed that there is remission of our sins. And we're thankful for that. We love you. We thank you today in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, folks. Uh, have a great day, and we'll see you Wednesday.